Hi Stampers, welcome to Great Inspirations. My name is Kim Tolbert and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So today I thought we would take an in detail look at a bundle from Stampin' Up! called Cutest Cows. And as you can see I have three cards here that are very similar but different and they were all made using that bundle of products. Now that bundle includes the cutest cows builder punch and of course the cutest cows stamp set. Now to just give ourselves a better look at these images and how this punch works I've created these two little charts and here we have all the images from the stamp set stamped out. There are three bodies to choose from for your cows. And there are three different heads. Here are horns, eyes, and a little nose and mouth for the snout. It's a little cowbell, some grass, a single flower, three sunflowers, a rooster, a little chick, and a chicken. A milk can and then of course some sentiments it's your special day holy cow milk it for all it's worth what's moo with you thank you congratulations and the little things you do make such a big difference so these stamps are 24 of them and they are photopolymer and as you can see here on the front of the case they are smaller than actual size. Here's the inside. Now for the punch, right here, the cow builder punch, it will punch out these four images, the horns, and while I call a tuft, that's that little part right here, kind of looks like the bangs on a cow. Sometimes they'll have some, looks like hair there. And there's the head, the snout, and the body. Now, this punch will punch out this image right here. And it will also punch out these two heads. It does not punch out this head or these two body images. So when you punch these out, you can either stamp the images and use the punch to punch them out or you can create a cow with just these images that are punched and that's what I've done right here. So that's a very quick in detail look at the stamp set and the punch. But now let's take a peek at the cards. Now lately I've been giving you, um, when I can, a template for my card layouts. And I usually just number them. But this one, I have shown you before, and it is called Around the Block. Because you use four strips of designer paper to make a frame. And what I like about this, um, layout is it's just like the punch um, and the stamp set for the cutest cows it's very versatile you can do many different things with it um, you could make all these the exact same designer series paper you could make each one different um, this I've cut a center panel but if you just lay the strips down directly on the cardstock you can stamp on the inside panel it leaves with some exceptions and we'll talk about those later but the other thing about these cards is our little cow heads move or I should say they move <laughs> and that technique to get those little heads to move it's very very easy and we have actually done it before I did a video um, back at Christmas time with the rocking horse bundle and I made the little rocking horse um, rock. 
So it's the exact same thing, just on a smaller scale. So I thought I would walk you through how to do this card layout, the around the block layout, and how I did the little um, cow, this little moving head. Now, for these two, let me get the little thing back out. These two, these are the heads I used for that, and they can be punched out. So what you do is you stamp one, color it the way you want, punch it out, and then you punch out a blank one that you use for a backing. Now that's all easy peasy, but what if you want this little cow head right here, and the punch doesn't punch it out, and you need its little backing to be identical. Well, I bet you can figure that out, but I will show you. So what we're going to do, we are going to put together this version of the card with this cow head, only we're going to his body. It's going to be this body. It's going to be laying down, taking a little rest. So let me get out all of the supplies. And there are a few. Of course, we'll need some adhesive. We're also going to need a brad. These are the... Um, brush brass butterflies that we'll be embellishing the card with. And then here are is a card base. And I've already stamped inside, it's your special day, happy birthday. And we will be stamping holy cow on the outside. And I just realized I did that in um, pecan pie and we're going to um, use granny apple green. That's okay. And we'll get some granny apple green though for our grass or for our greeting. And we'll just go ahead and keep our grass with the um whatever that <laughs> um oh my goodness, garden green. Okay, so I'll just put that one away. So anyway, there's our card base. Of course, dimensionals and this is temporary adhesive. We'll talk about that in a minute. And some scissors, a piercing mat, piercing tool, and here we go. So here's our card base. Now, when you put these four together, they should equal a five and a quarter by four mat so that there will be a little border of your cardstock around it. If you can eyeball that and do it right onto the cardstock, that's great. And that's when you can uh, stamp your image right in the little square that's left in the center. But if you can't do it, or if you don't feel comfortable, what you can do is you can use just a piece of printer paper that is five and a quarter by four inches. And this will help you to adhere your pieces where they need to go. And then you can just put it, just adhere it directly to your card base, just like you would any other layer. And then that's why I would put this um, focal piece separately on the card. That, and also, if you're going to use alcohol markers, sometimes even if you have the Whisper White thick cardstock, the ink, the alcohol ink, will um, bleed through to the this side of the card, and you know, that's not always a fun thing to have happen. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is um, do our around the block. And you just need to decide what um, side you want to use for the design, for the long and the short. And for this, I think I'll use the small check pattern for the long ones. And then the little plaid for the short ones. Now the long ones are one inch by four and a quarter. And the shorter ones are one inch by three inches. 
Now, on my corresponding blog post, you will find all these measurements. You will find a chart for this card layout, and you will find all the supplies I use, the cutting measurements, all that stuff. And the link to that blog post will be found in the description of this video. So I'm going to use just some Stampin' Seal. And we're going to adhere these pieces. That's a new one. I hadn't started it yet. There we go. I find it's a little different doing this when you're standing up on camera than when you can get your head right over it. But that's okay. We'll figure this out. It'll work. Then we're just going to butt this right up against that one. Lay it down. Then we're going to do the next long one. Or if you wanted to, you could do this short one over here. That's up to you. It makes no difference. Actually, it might be better standing over it. I seem to be doing a better job than I was yesterday. And there we go. And now, like I said, we will adhere this. Oh, that needs a little more. You know what? Let me just pop a blue dot under it. Find the end. There we go. There, that works. Now we are going to put this on here. best I can. There we go. Now, if this were cardstock, and like I said, if you weren't planning on using um, the Stampin' Blends alcohol markers, you could just stamp your image right in there. But there is our card base with the little frame, and now we're going to um, create this center part right here. I have the little cow stamped, and I need to get a couple of markers here, the um, Stampin' Blends. I'm going to be using the basic black light, um, smoky slate, dark, and one of the neutral tones or natural tones, I, I can't remember what they're called, but it's um, the second lightest and its number is 900. And I'll just color in for this. There's no need to deal with the um, shading and all that. It's just a really simple image. Should have colored this in beforehand, then you wouldn't have to wait on me. So fun watching someone color, huh? But I'm just going to color in the little black spots on our cow and color in his little hooves a bit. There we go. Now some cow hooves are actually lighter than that, but it doesn't matter. You can color your cow any color you want. So there he is, at least his bottom part. And he's going to need some grass around him, so there's this little stamp right here. And like I said, I use the garden green. I'll stamp some grass and then I'm going to stamp I'm going to kind of put pressure 
on the left side of my stamp and stamp I don't really want to get a lot on his tail and then stamp right under him stamp again maybe overlap a little there and stamp again and then a little more now on this one you see I kind of stamped two rows and I think I'll do that with this and I just kind of came over here over here and then I'm just going to once again lean on that left side and now I'm going to come and lean on the right side and there we go he's in the grass so we'll put the this green away and we're going to stamp our greeting over here the holy cow we'll use our granny apple green the designer series paper that I'm using is the glorious gingham and that's found in the annual catalog and this is granny apple green there's our holy cow close that up and now we just kind of wipe this off a little bit it has some ink I'll flip it over too it's got I don't know what that is <laughs> something shiny might be glitter or glimmer or something so I have stamped this cow head and we will color that in quickly here I'm going to use that number 900 in the natural tones for his little snout because cows have snouts not real sure what that is is it a muggle I don't know it's been a long time since I've been around cows well our neighbor has cows but I mean when I was little my dad had cows we milked them and we also had some beef cows and then we'll use the black or his little tuft, as I call it. And then we'll use the smoky slate dark for his little horns. Okay, so now we need two of these but we don't have the punch. So all I'm going to do is need to fussy cut them. So we're going to put two pieces of cardstock together so we can fussy cut them at the same time. And that's where my um, temporary adhesive comes in. And this is made by Tombow, but if you do not have this, you can use some of the um, green glue, the mono um, glue, or the uh, multi-purpose glue from Tombow that um, is in the Stampin' Up! catalog. And you just would squirt a little bit on the back, and I just take my finger over it, and then I let it set for a little bit, Just and sometimes I take my finger over it again. You don't want it to be super tacky but um, you know you just want to have a little bit of hold and I don't use very much just a drop or so another thing you could do is put them together like this you can put a paper clip here and do your cutting go around and then as you get to where the paper clip is hold this together very carefully move the paper clip to the top and finish your cutting so that's another option you can also um, remember how we used to roll tape so if you have a low-tech uh, tape even washi tape you could do that to hold it together if you're really brave you can just hold it in your hand and hold it together but I'm I'm not that good so anyway we're going to start our fussy cutting and the purpose of cutting these both together is so they'll be fussy cut the exact same way you know when we use a punch the punch is going to be exact or pretty darn close Fuzzy cutting, we don't have that luxury. So this is what I found works when you need 
two pieces that are going to be layered one on top of the other that need to be pretty close to identical. Just continue. I like to get a lot of the paper out of my way. Just know this does not have to be 100% perfect. You just keep falling around, move your paper, and help your scissors along there. And then Trim that. And let's see if we can get this apart. Yep. There it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know what's going on lately with my voice, but <clears throat> I sure do keep getting a scratchy itchiness in it. So anyway, we have... Our two cow pieces, our heads. Now we need a brad and Stampin' Up has these brads. They're black and white and they're also, you can probably see the black one maybe a little better if I can. Here's the one, the square head and then the round one. Well, for this particular project, we're going to need a square head because when we punch a hole through here, this head may go right through the hole because I'm going to use the piercing tool on my take your pick tool. And it's a little wider, oh, there's another one, than uh, the round head. So I have my piercing mat. And we're going to decide where we want our cow. And we want to make sure we can move his head without getting on the greeting and when we've decided where we want it you want to pick a place you don't want it to be up here because that's too close to the edge and um, the brag could tear so you want to go more towards the middle and poke okay now we're done with the oil no we're really not I need that some more so anyway we're going to take our brad and put our brad through here and then through our focal panel. Then we're going to turn it over, spread this out. <clears throat> but what I like to do is I take my, you can use um, the paper piercing tool. I just put it under right there to raise this up a little and then flatten the other end out. It will kind of raise up a little bit too, but we'll take care of that here in a minute. And I just punch down and then what we want to make sure is that this moves freely and if we see it's moving freely then that's good so the next thing we're going to do is get some dimensionals and these are small the mini ones because this he has some very small places now you want to kind of avoid getting it on your brad but you can put it close. So we'll put that one there. Probably gonna need at least one more, maybe up here. I'm not sure if I can put one there. I might need to cut one up, but we'll see. Oh yeah, that'll fit just fine. And then we peel our backings off. Okay. And we go and we line. I started with his little horns, lined it up, and lined up his ears. And then just push down. And there he is. And his little head moves just fine. <clears throat> so, you might have seen, I did not mat these focal panels. I just put them on. But this one I matted. And that's what we'll do for this one. So I have a piece of the Granny Apple Green cardstock. 
And we're just going to put it on with some adhesive. Put that right here in the center. And now we're going to put him up on dimensionals. That is not straight <laughs> at all. Let's see if I can. Oh, goodness sakes. Not doing very well today. There, that might be a little better. But when you make something with the little brad that turns the head or whatever you need to pop it up on dimensionals because it needs space to be allowed to be able to move for that brad to move so we will just put some dimensionals on here and you do want to avoid your brad which is pretty easy on this one I think I can put, well, you know what, I'll put a mini one there. That'll work. And we just don't have to worry about that brad. So we'll get this on here, and then we'll put our butterflies on. And this card will be finished. go. Then we'll get our little embellishment here. And <clears throat> going to put a little one up here. I think I used three little ones on the other one, but since he's laying down, there's plenty of space. I can put one of the bigger ones. Put it that way. And we'll put another small one. And there we go. There is our little cutest cows round the block card with this little movable head. So there's the one in Granny Apple Green. This one is Berry Burst, and both of those have the mats. And here's the Pecan Pie and blueberry bushel well that's the card and i hope you enjoyed <clears throat> excuse me again my goodness taking a look at the cutest cows stamp set and that cutest cows builder punch when you purchase these together you can save 10 percent but as always you can purchase them separately if you like Thank you so much for joining me. And remember, all the supply list measurements and that kind of thing will be found in my corresponding blog post. And the link to that blog post is in the description of this video. So until next time, stamp happy.